Father, we praise you, we bless you. We magnify your holy name, God. We give you the glory, we give you the praise. And we give you the honor, Lord. We thank you because we can come into your presence to worship you, to praise your name, to magnify you, to glorify your holy name, Lord. Your name is wonderful. Your name is glorious. And we worship you. We give you all the praise and all the hallelujahs and all the glory of God in Jesus. Worship and praise and adoration to you, Lord. The name of Jesus is a strong tower. And today the righteous run into it and they are made whole. They're healed. They're comforted. They're made strong. The people of God is made strong in the Lord and in the power of your might, Lord. The blood of Jesus prevails to our spirit, soul, and body, to the atmosphere of this place. The blood of the Lamb prevails. The glory of God prevails in this place and the anointing destroys every yoke of God. Father, we pray that you would open that portal over Christ's life spring fellowship today and over all of our people that are here in church and all of our viewers. Let the heavens rejoice and be glad and let the angels descend and ascend and let your portal of God bring forth your presence into this church and to all those who are viewing of God in the mighty name of Jesus. We command bound the shackles and the powers of darkness and let your angels dispatch your message of joy and peace in this place today. In the mighty name of Jesus. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor, Lord. And we pray that your kingdom come. And that your will be done. Here on earth as it is in heaven. Today receive the glory. Receive the praise. Receive the honor. To you be the glory. Let your people be blessed. Let your people receive the joy of thee today. In the mighty name of Jesus. We choose to worship you today, Lord. We choose to praise you. We choose to magnify you, Lord. And we choose to worship you. Let the people of God give God praise today. Let the church rise up and magnify his holy name. Where the two or three of God are in his name, there is he in the midst of us uh, to bless us, to heal us, to comfort us, to deliver us, uh, to bring hope where there is no hope. Uh, today you are a special person and you come before the throne of God in boldness because he has given you access into his presence. To you, I speak joy, I speak glory, I speak healing, I speak deliverance, I speak strength, I speak the power of God over your lives. And may God indwell you today. Glory to God. Glory to God. The Bible says in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preach unto the Gentiles, believe on in the world, and re received up into glory. 
And that verse is speaking about Jesus. He came in the flesh, justifying the spirit, seen of angels. At his coming, angels rejoiced. When he was born in a manger, angels, angels and nuns come see the child which is born. And he was preached to the, unto the Gentiles by the church. And the world believed him. And then he was received up in glory also. He is forever sitting at the right hand of the Father. Ever making intercession for us. But he's such a good Lord. He did not leave us on this earth alone. For the Bible declares in the book of Ephesians chapter 2. That we are made to sit with him in heavenly places uh, in Christ Jesus. I want you to know today that there is a man on the throne of God. And his name is Jesus Christ. As we worship him today, I want you to join us in worship. Join us in glorifying and magnifying the Christ child. So that at his name, every yoke be broken. Every power of darkness be broken. Salvation come to this earth. And the sins of mankind be redeemed at the name of Jesus. Join us today at in your home. And praise the Lord with us. And magnify the Lord. We have a worship session. And we have a, a little moment of fellowship. Whereby the believers will make some presentation. And I want you to enjoy it all. And if you want to make a presentation next time. You need to be in church. God bless you. Sorry for all of this. But we can't hold much people here today. Ten in the auditorium. That's it. God bless you as our worshipers come. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. He came to save us and to heal us and to deliver us. Thank you, Lord. The light of the world came upon us. Jesus sent his only son to take away the sins of the world, to redeem us, to heal us, and to deliver us. Lord, let your light shine in the darkness, O oh God. Let us pray and let us worship him this morning. Yes. For he alone deserves the glory and the honor. Yes. Let us exalt his holy name. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Jesus. We worship you this morning, O oh God. We give you all praise and thanks this morning, O oh God. You are worthy of our praise, O oh God. We bring our offering and praise and thanksgiving before you this morning, O oh God. We lay it all at the altar this morning, O oh Lord. We thank you for your goodness, O oh God. We thank you for what you have done for us, O oh Lord. We exalt you this morning, O oh Lord. Jesus, may you receive the glory and the honor, O oh God. Use us this morning, O oh Lord. Use us as the instruments of worship this morning, O oh God. Use us for your honor and your glory, O oh God. Pour out your anointing upon us this morning, O oh Lord. Move within the earth this morning, O oh Lord. Touch everyone listening right now, O oh God. Every home, O oh God. We lift them up before your throne of grace right now, O oh God. We pray, O oh Father, you are poor this morning, O oh Lord. Minister, O oh Lord, into each and every life, O oh God. Break through this morning, O oh Lord. Let your light shine, O oh God. Shine in every home, O oh Lord. In every heart, O oh God. Oh, Holy Spirit, just have your way this morning, O oh Lord. We need you this morning, O oh God. We're desperate for you this morning, O oh Lord. Shut up, Shut up, I am that about so far, 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 I am that about
You are good, Lord. We worship you. We adore you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
I guess they will have to remember that for the rest of their life. So we always look forward to our Christmas service, Good Friday service, and our Old Year's Night service. But this year is so much different. But we want to thank God that we can come into your home and preach the gospel to you, right? So there's no excuse that you can't go to church. You're right in your home and church is right there. Praise the Lord. At this time, I call up Brother Moses to read the scripture verse. Before Christmas and I totally agree with her on that. Amen? Amen? So what I have to say, Christmas is not just about the presents. We all have to remember the about, about Christ, presence in our lives. Amen. Amen? Amen. At Christmas, we're all excited about the presents under the tree. Amen. However, we need to remember that our greatest present was placed on the tree Amen. to redeem each and every one of us from our sins. Amen. Amen. Amen? This morning my scripture reading is from Luke 2, verse 10 and 11. And it goes, But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Amen. Today in the tongue of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Amen. So we, you see Christ is the head of everything that we do yes. in this season as well. And remember, He is the reason for this season. Yes. Amen? Thank you. Yes. Praise the Lord. Jesus is the Lord. He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah.
You're the bright and morning star. You're the healer of our hearts. Oh Lord, you are Emmanuel. You're the song the angels sing. You are the mighty King of kings. Oh Lord, you are Emmanuel. Emmanuel.
I am no longer just in Bethlehem. I am right there where you are. You may not be aware of me. In the celebration, you will have to look beyond the store and all the decorations. But if you take a moment from your list of things to do and listen to your heart, you will find me. I'm waiting there for you. You are the one I want to be with. And you will find me in the stillness as I am whispering your name, Lord Jesus. That's my boy. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister Angela. You know, it's about the Lord, as I said, it's about Christ. Yes. And so we need to worship Him. We need to give Him the praise. It's not about the gift and the, how many gifts is under your tree. But remember, Jesus is the reason for the season. Hallelujah. This time we have a song by Sister Becky.
of your people, yes. O oh God. And that they will hide your word within their hearts, so they yes, not sin against you, O oh God. And they walk and after the your spirit, O oh God, and not after the flesh. In the name of Jesus, in we pray for the anointed to flow today, O oh God. Let the anointed break and destroy and reopen every plan of the enemy. We come against the works of the adversary, oh, everything God, that's yes, trying God, to seek to destroy God. the churches. We come in against Jesus it in the name of Jesus. Name. And we renounce the powers of in Satan the name in Jesus', of Jesus. name. Every sickness and the spirit of COVID-19 will curse you. We send you back to the pit of in hell in the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. We bind every works of Satan, in O God. Jesus and we trust you that you're going to hold it. We're going to move the blood, blood away Jesus and let your Holy Spirit take control today, yes, O God. Lord. We give you thanks and praise, O God. God. Lord, the servant, and not your word Lord, today, and not your God. servant. And let your name be lifted up Lord, as we celebrate your word, O oh God. Give yes. us the strength and we give you the glory and the honor. We commit yes. everything into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. I just have my time over to my heart and Pastor David Jowell. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister Elin. It's a privilege to be here. And the presence of the Lord is in this place. Amen? Amen. Glory, glory, glory to God. I want to welcome you that are here in our sanctuary today. And uh, I, I want to welcome our God, uh, and thank God for all of our Facebook viewers and listeners uh, and uh, our partners in the faith. It is very important as believers uh, that we know that we have people with us. Amen? And uh, people with us is what we call fellowship. And when we can come together as one in fellowship, it's great. It's wonderful. It's good to know that you're my brother, you're my sister. It's good to know that somebody is here to bless us. Somebody is praying for me. Somebody is trusting God for me. I want you to know, brethren, that uh, as a church, we believe in prayer. Amen? And uh, as a church, we do meet uh, uh, at least three times in the week for prayer. We meet uh, physically in the sanctuary once on, once on, uh, on Wednesdays, and then on Tuesday and Friday. We meet in our homes for an hour of prayer, whereby believers take 15 minutes each, praying one for another, and praying for the whole world, and praying for you who are listening also. It's a privilege that we can lift up people, that we can give God praise in the midst of this crisis, uh, in the midst of this circumstances. Uh, it's a privilege to know that we have a God uh, that is greater than what is happening. Uh, and if you can only believe, uh, if you can only what? Believe and trust the Lord, then your faith will bring your miracle in Jesus' name. Now, today, I hope for a short while, I always say so, but you know, that sometimes it's achieved and sometimes it's not achieved. But whatsoever it is today. You know, as I was thinking on this message, for unto us, everybody say unto us. Unto me, say unto me. Unto us, a child is born. Unto us. A son is given. So two times I see in this verse, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6, the Lord is saying, and the prophet is quoting him, unto us, the people of God, whether it be the Jewish people, whether it be the church, unto us. A child is what? Born. Unto us a son is given. As I was preparing this message, it reminds me of the Trinity. I always say the Trinity is three in one. Three persons, but one God. And uh, today, I like to maybe talk a little on two in one. Two is one and one is two. Two is one 
and one is two. I know I'm messing up you mathematicians. Two is one and one is two. I'll do a little explanation maybe and then move on. Two is one. Who is the two? The child and the son. Two, but one. Christ is one, but he is the child who became the child and the son. Two is one and one is two. I hope by the time you reach home or the end of the message you will get the meaning of that. Glory to God. In the book of Timothy it says excuse that son it's coming from not me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Okay, I'm all wired here with different types of wire. Glory to God. I hope I don't get electrocuted. Praise the Lord. Much better? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Two is one and one is two. And then you will tell me one and one make two. God, praise the Lord. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of Jesus. In the book of 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. And without controversies. Great is the mystery of what? Godliness. God was manifested in what? The flesh. Justified. In the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believe on in the word, and received up into glory. This is not my true foundation text, but it is part of the message in that it says God was manifested. In the flesh. Glory to God. The foundation scriptures are found in the book of Isaiah chapter 2. The people, sorry, chapter 9 verse 2. The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. They have dwelt in the land of the shadow of death. Upon them have the light shined. I want to say here at the beginning of my message that Jesus Christ is that light. Jesus announced to the world when he came that I am the light of the world. And when he came, it was a period of time and for 400 years, the children of Israel had not heard from a prophet. And during the time that Jesus came, just before he began his ministry, there was one by the name of John the Baptist, that is the greatest of men born of women. He began to announce that there is one that is coming after me, whose shoelace I'm not worthy to tie. And he was pointing his finger to Jesus Christ as the light of the world. When he saw Jesus on the, uh, on, on the bank of Jordan walking towards him to be baptized, he announced to the people and to the world, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes the sin of the world away. I want you to know today that Jesus came as the light of the world but he also came with a mission and a purpose to heal us of our sins to deliver us from the bondage of sin 
so that we who are walking in darkness can now see the light and live in the light and be the light because the light shines through you and the light shines through the church. The church has this mission of shining the light of Jesus in this dark world today. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Glory to God. And then Isaiah said in verse 6 of chapter 9. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and the peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon the kingdom to order it. And to establish it with, the, with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. This was a prophecy Glory to God. Let's pause for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for the anointing that destroys every yoke, every bondage. Every yoke, every bondage, every unbelief, every distrust, every hindrance to the body of the people. I speak the blood of Jesus Lay the stripes of Jesus upon those who are sick. I release the power of the Holy Ghost upon those who are tormented by spirits. I release the anointing oil to destroy every yoke and every bondage that your people might be in today. And in the name of Jesus, I call forth sickness. Come out in the name of Jesus. I call forth bondage. I said be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. I say glory to God in the highest and goodwill to all men. And may the earth rejoice for the king is born, the child of Bethlehem in the mighty, 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 mighty name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, glory to God. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. That will be about the meat of the message for today. The other part in the other in this verse and the other verse, maybe, maybe as the Lord direct, it will be on Christmas Eve night. But for today, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom uh, to order it. And to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth forevermore. And I love this blood part. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. You know, I love the word in Jeremiah that says, where God says, I will watch my word. And I will perform my word. I want you to know today when God speaks something, it is not light. It is something that comes from the one who created everything. It, the words of God is coming from the one who is all holy, all righteous, and full of integrity. And when he speaks something, he does not go back on his word. 
You know, about two weeks ago, I was a little ill. And I say ill, and there was one thing that kept me up at night is that I would begin to quote a portion of scriptures and I'll give it to you, to some of you. I begin to pour, quote this portion of scriptures and every time I quote this portion of scriptures, it is as if the word of God would bring healing and minister to my spirit and my soul and to my body and perform an operation in the mind and bring me alive again. Because you know what? The word is quick. The word is powerful. And whatever the devil seek to put on you, when you begin to quote the word, when you begin to say the word of God, and when you begin to say, thus saith the Lord of hosts, there is no devil in the pit of hell. There is no bondage that can keep you down because the word will uphold you and the word will keep you and the Lord, his word will bring you out of bondage. Glory to God. Glory to God. The zeal of the Lord will perform this. Now this portion of scripture or this prophecy began about 700 years before the birth of Jesus Christ. About 700 years before the birth of Jesus Christ. And yet, the Lord knew he had to stand by his word. And the Lord knew that when he speaks something, it cannot be taken away. It cannot come back. And so he says, The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. And 700 years later, part of this scripture was fulfilled. And that is the first part that says, Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulders now from that part the government shall be upon his shoulders coming down to verse 7 I will save that for another time because time will not permit me to go into all of this today so and the first portion is speaking about the time of Christmas, when the Christ child was born. The latter part, with the government, had to do with his, with his crucifixion, as well as his kingdom that has to be set up upon this earth. And I want you to know that his kingdom is going to be upon the earth. And that in the days to come, and I believe very, very early, the Antichrist will make his manifestation. We will go through a period of great tribulation. But in the time when the Jewish people seem to be, seem to be in a place where they cannot move and to be destroyed, the Lord will intervene. He will come from heaven and destroy the Antichrist and all the works of the enemy and put the devil for a thousand years in the bottomless pit. And that is the part I'm not going to speak about today. The kingdom of God has arrived. And Jesus, when he began preaching upon this earth, he preached the first few words he said is that the kingdom of God has come. So this is one of the prophecies of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament that is given in these two verses that covers a period of over 3,700 years. Part of it has been fulfilled and part has not yet been fulfilled. 
when we think of Jesus there are so many prophecies that are based upon him and every one of them has been coming to pass one after the other within some of the words for example within two verses here we can span a period of over 307 3700 years imagine how the word of god is so great and not only so great that god holds to his word Amen. and every inch every part of his word will come to pass and he will watch over yes. it Amen. and he will perform it Amen. glory to god glory to god so unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given a child is born Everybody said a child. A child. That which is born of, of a woman is a human. And you know that. Anything that is born of a woman that is not a human is ungodly, demonic, and of the devil. And don't you believe that that has not happened in this world as yet. It had happened already. There are people that are bringing forth kids. Where the devil is trying through some means or some method. To bring forth a kind into this world. But I do not want to get into the demonic thing of, uh, uh, within this message. I want to stick on the child that was born of a woman and his name is Jesus Christ Jesus told Mary that look you will conceive you will have a child Mary said to this angel Gabriel how can this be everybody say how can this be how can this be you see there is a lot of promises that is given to you as a child of God and as a church and there are times we ask the question, how can this be? And the angel turned to, Ga to, to, to the angel Gabriel turned to Mary and said, the Holy Ghost. Everybody said the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost shall overshadow you. And that which is born or formed or conceived within you is of the Spirit of God. Everybody say the Spirit of God. So I'm saying to you, just as the angel said to Gabriel, there is a lot of promises. There is a lot of seed that God has invested into your life. The seed is the Word of God that He has spoken over your life. The seed is the purpose of God that He has registered within you before He sent you down from His throne of grace. The seed is within you and I'm saying to you that that seed, that purpose will be fulfilled by the power of the Holy Ghost that is within you. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost within you, you cannot Everybody say, I cannot. Without the Holy Ghost, I cannot function. Without the power of the Spirit, that purpose will not be fulfilled within you. You have to. You have to have the Holy Spirit within you. So, the child is the humanity of Christ. While the Son of God, the Son is what? Given. The child was born, but the Son was what? Given. The Bible said, For God so loved this, this world that He what? Gave His only begotten Son. Now, the child was born through a woman. The son was given 
by God, who is the Son of God, the Christ, the everlasting one, the one who knew no beginning nor ending. The child has the beginning in Bethlehem, but the Christ, the Son of the living God, was always there and was always God and will always be God and will always sit upon the throne of the living God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He is the deity. He is God. The deity of Christ. The son that is given refers to the deity of Christ. Glory to God. In the terms of child, there is an indication of age. When you're born, you grow from that year until the year that you are at the moment. Some of you can count your age if you know how to count. Some of you can really calculate your age if you know how to calculate. For example, I'm 61. Maybe you are 85. I don't know. But praise God. When you think in terms of a human, you can calculate, calculate or there is an indication of age. But when you think about the Son of God, there is no reference and there is no way that you can calculate age with God. Because God is not a God of age. And God is not a God of time. God is eternal. Everybody say, God is eternal. So when we think about a child born in Bethlehem, he grew up and for 33 and a half years, he was manifested in the flesh upon this earth. But the Son of God was always eternal from eternity past to eternity to come. He will always be the son. He will always be God. And he will always within him have the fullness of the Godhead. Hallelujah. So I want you to distinguish the two is one and the one is two. Praise the Lord. He was made of his mother and born of the father. His father, real father, was not Joseph. His real father was God the father. But at the same time, he was born and he was what? Given. As a human, he was born. As a son, he was given. Good, I already quote that portion. So two is one, and one is two. Two is one, and one is two. Do not think of two, but of one. Sometimes we would like to say, Jesus is Jesus, and he's only a son. We like to say that the spirit is just a wind or a person. Sometimes we like to say God the Father is God the Father and he is God. And only God the Father is God. But God the Son, God the Spirit, and God the Father, three distinguished persons, but yet one God. The three of them is one. Now, when it comes to Jesus, we look at him and we see the Son of God is one person, born of the Father, sprung from the Virgin. The child that came from the Virgin, we also look as a person. But the Son of God and that which came from the Virgin is one and the same person. The names may differ in order, but you uh, unite in what? One. They may differ in order, but unite in one. That which she gave birth to was the one that made her. I want you to look at that. 
she gave birth to someone. But that someone that she gave birth to was the one that actually made her. And that's the great mystery of the Bible, which many people cannot conceive. And many religions cannot understand is that God became man. God became flesh. Great is the mystery of godliness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Man was made in her and the highness himself was founded, had founded her. Man was made in her, but the highness himself was founded in her. Glory to God. He was a man indeed in body, but the highest in what? Power. Inasmuch Christ came a hundred percent man upon this earth, but yet within this hundred percent man is the highest in Whatever he did in art, he did it as an instrument that was a human yielding to God the Father and the words of the Father. And whatever he did in terms of miracles and wonders were manifested through the power of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God that resided within him. And he was demonstrating to the world that look, this is the way I called you to live. This is the way I intended you to live. This is the way I intended that the first Adam should live. But he failed. But Jesus is saying, look, I have come to restore all things. I've come to make all things new. So that as I am in this world, so is you. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. I just pray. I just pray that all believers will grasp this truth and see that as Christ is, as Christ walked the world, as Christ was manifested in the world, so we who are born again, believers, are manifested with the power, the same power. Power that raised Christ from the dead upon this earth. Glory to God. Though being God and man, he has something peculiar to his own nature and something in common with us. But in both cases, he's one. And in both, he is perfect. He came as a man, but he knew no sin. I want you to know that. He lived for 33 and a half years upon this earth and never sinned. So within him, as a man, we see a perfect human being. Not just a perfect human being, but I see within him the only candidate upon this upon the earth are ever born through a woman that was qualified to destroy sin and destroy the powers of darkness of this world. No other man upon this world in this world or, or from the time of Adam to now that was born without sin and lived without sin. It was only Jesus that did that. So as God, he was perfect and he is perfect. And as a man, he was perfect and he stayed perfect. Hallelujah. And because as a man, he was perfect, he was qualified as the perfect lamb to be slain for the sin of the world. Hallelujah. Other than that, the Bible says, the soul that sinned shall surely die. It means that all of us would have died and faced the first death and the second death without the chance of being 
uh, of repentance. But thank God for Jesus. Everybody say thank God for Jesus. He came. And though we have sinned. But accepting him as Lord and Savior. Destroyed the power of sin within us. And as we yield ourselves to him. Through the power of the spirit. We will not walk in sin. But we will walk without fulfilling the lust of the flesh or the lust of the world. And we will overcome Satan when we walk in the power of his spirit. But if we walk in lust, if we yield to sin, that is what we will become, death. But Jesus came so that which, so that which was in him, that power, that anointing, that endowment, that was in him can be within us. That seed that was in him can be within us. So this child came with a mission and with a purpose. A child is born to us because we see in him the nature of a servant. As a man, he became the servant of God. Because the virgin conceived and brought forth a son. If you read the book of Mark, St. Mark, you would see the gospel of Mark identified Jesus Christ as the servant of God that was manifested in this earth to perform the will of the Father, the will of God. However, because it was the word of God who became flesh, in order to dwell among us and because he remain he remains what he was everybody say that he remains what he was that is he began without sin he ended without sin amen he began as god and he ended as god i want you to see here in him is man and in him is what God get the picture in him is man and in him is God he is totally 100% man totally 100% God so I say to you he died as a man took the sins of the world and was raised by the power of the Spirit of God lifted into heavenly places and made to sit with God in heavenly places at the throne of God at the right hand of the Father he sits upon the throne now I want you to get a picture so here is a man through the power of the resurrection and the ascension is sitting there at the right hand of the Father. And I want you to see a man is sitting with God. I want you to go back to the book of Genesis where God said let us make man in our image and in our likeness. The whole intention and the whole purpose of God making man was that man would be like God and have fellowship and have close connection and intimately involved with God. Man failed but Jesus came as that man. God came as that man to elevate us and bring us back into that place of God again. So that through Jesus Christ we will all have our thrones. And that is why the Bible said that he is the king of kings. He's the great king and we are all kings. He's the God of gods. He's the great God 
but we are one, the small one, the small gods also. It may take a while for you to digest all of that. Glory to God. But I know that you have it. I know that you have it. Glory to God. But for some people, they say, are we gods? Yeah. You're gods. But he's the big God. He's the God of gods. He's the King of kings. He was given by the Spirit and was sent by the Spirit. For since the prophet had no defined, uh, not defined by whom he was given, he shows that he was given by the grace of the Trinity. He was given what? By the grace of the Trinity. Jesus was given to us by the grace of the Trinity. And I'll close here because our time is going. But I want you to see that the Trinity was involved in giving Jesus as a man to us. The Trinity was given or was involved in giving Jesus as a man to us. Inasmuch as the Son himself gave himself, so he gave himself, he could not be subject to himself according to his Godhead. Therefore, that he was given could not be a sign of subjection in the Godhead. It's not that Jesus subjected himself within the, the, the Godhead, but he, he through the Godhead became man. Now, let's read a, a few portions of scriptures here. So we're going to look at in this moment how the Godhead was involved in giving Jesus to us as a man. Let's look first at the Son. Grace be unto you. Book of Galatians chapter 1 verse 3 and 4. Grace be unto you, be to you, and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. So there are two persons two of the God here. There are two persons. God the Father and God the Son. Talking about Jesus. Who gave himself for our sin. Everybody say God the Son. God the Son. Give himself. So we see here right away. That his coming upon this earth was not just the Father sent him or born of the Spirit, but he what? Give himself. He became the offering. He offered himself, like we sang just now, the offering. He offered himself. So within the Godhead, Jesus offered himself for our sins that he might what? Deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God the Father. Whatsoever he did, he did it according to what? The will of God the Father. I want you to see the unity, the harmony within the Godhead within the trinity of giving Jesus Christ into the earth unto us the people and he was given to us so that we might be delivered from this present evil world this world was not made evil it was not corrupt it was through the sin of man that it became corrupt hallelujah verse 35 of Luke chapter 1 the angel replied, the Holy Spirit, talking to Mary, at the beginning I quoted this, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be what? Holy. And he will be called the Son of God. Here we see right away 
the Spirit of God. Everybody said the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God was involved in the conception of Jesus Christ. Without the Spirit of God, that would not have happened in Mary's life. She would not have able to conceive without a sperm from a man. So here we see also that man, sinful man, had no place in the life of Jesus Christ or in the conception and birth of Jesus Christ. What Samuel was conceived within Mary was totally from the throne room of God was totally from the Trinity, the Holy Spirit overshadowed the power of the Most High coming upon her. Hallelujah. And that which was conceived, that which was born, was the Son of God. Amen? Praise the Lord. A child is born to us. A son is given to us. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. This signified the power of the cross, which at, the, at his crucifixion, he placed on his shoulders. I don't want to get in this because it will be another hour. So let's keep this maybe for next. Next Sunday, not, not Sunday, maybe for New Year's Eve night. Other than that, next Sunday. We're still in the Christmas and in the Christmas message. So let's get back to recap maybe a few things that we did today. What we did today. We learned that two is one and one is two. Go home and think about that. Two is one and one is two. Jesus is man and Jesus is God. But Jesus is one. And that's where I will conclude today. You want to have a great time this Christmas. Think about this miracle that God became man. And man, one man is God. His name is Jesus. Amen. I want you to think of this also as you go home and you are told before we close up. I want you to think about a man sitting on the throne of God to bring us into identification with God so as he is so are we also as you celebrate this great event note this is not a religious thing this is not something that we, 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 we do religiously every year but like we take our communion service and Jesus said, do this in what? Remembrance of me. When I think of Christmas, I do remember Jesus Christ. I do not come to church so that I can perform a religious rite at this time. But I come to church like the, like the, the wise men to worship. I come to church like the shepherds to see Jesus. I come to church because I realize on that great day that Jesus was born, a portal was opened in heaven and angels descended and angels ascended and angels announced and said, come see the Christ child that is born. Let us stand together and let us worship the Lord. Let us give him praise. Let us give him glory. Let us give him honor. For two is one. And one is two. God became man. Hallelujah. And that man was God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for the word today. We thank you for all worship. We thank you for all the brethren that was here doing their part and I thank you for faithful people that assembled together I thank you for all of our brethren at home who could not have made it here maybe because they were prohibited because of 
the laws and the bylaws. But I thank you because they could have listened to us. And I bless them. As your servant, I bless everyone here. I speak the blessings of the Christ child. I speak the power of the Holy Ghost that overshadow Mary upon everyone that is here and everyone that is viewing and listening. And I command yokes to be broken, powers of darkness to be broken at this time. And I praise you because we can all have come here and adore the King of Kings, the Christ child, the one who was born as a human in the manger. I give you praise and give you the glory. I thank you for your blessings upon your people, Lord. And I thank you for these moments in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Christmas time is a time of giving. It's a time of love. As my wife had said and most of the brethren have said. It's a time when we rejoice and give God praise. Give God glory. We give out of our very best. And uh, I want you to remember the Lord. Remember the house of the Lord. Remember Christ's life spring fellowship. And uh, give. Give. Give an offering unto the Lord in this moment, in this time. If you cannot send it or post it through a check, you can email it using your bank account. Uh, you get in there and you put it to the email that is written there, or you can also text it. Whatever method you use, we will be very grateful. And I know that you're doing it not for me or for Christ Life Spring Fellowship, but you're doing it for the Lord. And the Lord bless you real good as you do make your offering on this great Christmas. God bless you and see you on Christmas Eve night at 7 o'clock. Amen? Christmas Eve night at 7 o'clock. Praise the Lord at this time. Yeah. At this time.